Paper Mario The Origami King is the latest video game starring everyone's favourite mustachioed artisan. And shockingly enough, I mean you might want to sit down for this one, the fans have strong opinions about it. For one thing, the characters are so generic their own mother couldn't pick them out of a police lineup. Which begs the question, what would it look like if they weren't? Coming to you from beautiful downtown Fortitude Valley, it's the Harry Gold Show, with your host, Harry Gold. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the program. The recent Paper Mario games have been notably different in design and gameplay from the originals. And Nintendo remains as surprised as ever that enthusiasts don't love their favourite properties being screwed with. Now, fixing game design is well and truly above my pay grade, but fixing unexceptional artwork and making snide commentary? That I can do. The big art direction problem with this new game is that the characters are aggressively generic. Now this is a bob -omb, a common creature in the Mario universe. In the previous Paper Mario games, which longtime fans revere, venerate, and occasionally sacrifice goats to, you met bob -omb characters like Bobbery, Papatch, and Admiral White, who all had their own names, appearances, and, well, well, personalities might be a strong word, but, I mean, something like that. In the new game, however, the bob -omb that joins you on your adventure looks like any other bob -omb and their name, the sole function of which is to make sure you know who is being spoken about, is... bob -omb. I mean, bob -omb's my favourite character in Paper Human, the origami head of state. So what would bob -omb look like if he were more in line with the old games, as many fans wish? Well, the old method was to look at every component of a generic enemy design and see how it can be individualised. bob -omb has been in an accident which gave him amnesia and lost him his wick, so to his body we'd add bandages, to his eye, a patch. Seeing as he's practically just wandered out of the ER, his shoes could be hospital slippers, and his key might have seen better days. This design philosophy used to take generic Mario monsters and see how much they can be customised while still remaining recognisable. The new design philosophy is just the opposite. How little can we change them while still technically qualifying as a new character? Most of the time, the answer is not at all. But I'm not here to debate how this is an unnecessary and inexplicable impediment to the developer's creativity, and thus the quality of the game, with absolutely no measurable upside. Dead gummit, I'm just here to draw. Toads are another recurring species in the Mario universe that have previously made up a diverse set of paper characters. According to the game's producer, they're no longer allowed to depict Toads' age, gender, or anything else that might prevent forgettable mediocrity. Thusly, most of them are either totally plain or otherwise have a simple clothing item slapped on top. Only Nintendo would deliberately design a slick game with a generous budget to look like they're cutting as many corners as possible. Let's look at the Toad Chef from Overlook Tower. It's always good to be looking for a cute angle on the design. Bobbery's key was a ship's wheel, Jerry's wick was a stork. As this Toad's a chef, I think it would be a fun visual if we styled his mushroom cap to look cooked. Maybe not so fun for him though. I wonder if Toads taste any good. Facial hair just screams chef in the popular consciousness, though I'm not sure I've ever met one with a moustache. Whatever Guy Fieri calls that thing on his upper lip, it does not count. The old style often conveyed personality through pose and expression. This design has a permanent placid grin, even though their dialogue suggests a more stereotypical head chef, bossy and impatient. He should have his chin up and his chest puffed out, looking aloofly askance at the world. We'll give him a proper uniform, as well as that ascot thing that chefs on pizza boxes always wear. It's like people who wear cloth caps or cheap fedoras in real life. Slapping a hat on someone doesn't actually make them interesting. Now the moratorium on female toads is genuinely confusing. They already have Toadette appearing in other games, and her only character trait is being a toad that is also a girl. So let's look at rectifying this. The moratorium on female toads, I mean. Toadette is beyond saving. Maybe the museum curator should be a curatrix. Yes, that is what they're called. Of course, she'd wear the uniform of the middle-aged academic. Slightly pointy glasses with a cardigan over a shapeless dress. Also, like all women who aren't quite as artistic as they think they are, she would wear obnoxiously coloured Doc Martens boots, with maybe some Muppet coloured patches in her hair. We don't want the design too busy or too plain. If there's something unique in her cap design, the rest of the outfit should be scaled back. I thought it could be a cute visual to give her mushroom a Mondrian type pattern. I have a question for you. If they made every character in Star Wars other than Luke Skywalker an unnamed stormtrooper, do you think people would still like that movie as much? 
Well, transpose that thought to Paper Mario. The characters used to be all kinds of species, but now they're almost exclusively ordinary, identical, nameless toads. They're in the act or process of making or enlarging a whole, by which I mean the dictionary definition of boring. Maybe the accessory shop toad ought to be a different Mario regular, like a shy guy. Ah, but not just any shy guy, the franchise's first shy girl. She should be fully accessorized herself. The mask would be a little modified to put across not just that this is a woman, but a woman with pizzazz. And you can't get more accessorized than hoop earrings, that's just an incontrovertible law of nature. Once again, we're looking for a cute angle, so I think we'll exchange the shy guy's usual hood for a scarf wrapped with a similar silhouette. We want to be reinforcing that sassy personality too, so we'll give her a jaunty pose that exudes words like darling and fabulous. A little Prada here, a little Gucci there, and our shy gal is glammed up and ready for prime time. Even when characters that aren't toads or partners turn up, they still have not an iota of visual identity. You meet a religious sect of Koopa Troopers and they make Wonder White look exotic. Now not every single character needs their own personalized look, but even a group identity which sets a few characters apart helps to give visual diversity to a game. So the first order of business is to revert the Cooper's design to the way it used to look, because the new one sucks. That's right, I went there. We're dealing with some kind of esoteric pagan religious order, so of course we've got to have crimson hooded cloaks. Even though this covers them head to toe, we still want the shell coming out the back. How that works from a tailoring standpoint, I have no idea, but that's not my problem. And they have to be doing that monk thing with the two sleeves together. I don't know why they do it, I don't know what it's for, I just know it has to be. Here's another character that shouldn't be generic, but is anyway. There's a fun scene where you meet a Monty Mole grifter who's trying to fleece you and a few Coopers for a fat stack of moolah. Naturally, you'd want this guy to look like he's selling bootleg Timexes behind a dumpster. I'm talking the whole cliché. Trench coat, cloth cap, dark turtleneck underneath. He ought to look a little scruffy about the whiskers too, and his eyes would be permanently in shadow. This character's dialogue makes it immediately clear that he's a two-bit huckster. Honestly, I think it would be even funnier if you could tell just by looking at him that he's the most obvious shady con man possible, and yet the characters are still taken in. So here's one last grievance about the characters in this game. In Paper Mario's past, creatures that had just been newly invented in other Mario games were brought into the Paper Mario fold. No pun intended. Or was it? It would have been great to see the new game do something similar with recent Mario critters, like the ones from Super Mario Odyssey for instance. Take the Battle Lab Toad. Maybe he could be a Brutal instead. The whole dojo thing has kind of been done already in Paper Mario, so rather I'd opt for a mixed martial arts look. We'll give him one of those training helmets that look like you're wearing a turnbuckle on your head, and a big old Duplo block is supposed to slot into the side. We'll give him some of those Street Fighter fingerless boxing gloves and blue shorts to contrast. Though I was half tempted to dress him up as Apollo Creed, I figure that wouldn't have gotten past Nintendo's legal department anyway. How about the tram conductor? Well, a bonnet's main feature is their hat, so it only makes sense to give them a different one for a new design. Though in place of a top hat, he'd wear what a cursory detour through Bing tells me is called a peaked cap. He'd also wear a collar and tie. No need to trouble yourself with the physics or biology of it. When you're dealing with talking hat ghosts, Newton kind of goes out the window. And now the fans can be happy, because we've taken care of all of their problems with the new game. Except for the generic bosses, and the lack of EXP, and the way partners work now, and the breakable badges, and the lack of returning characters, the lack of interesting new characters, and Bobby in general. Let's play a game. I'll draw someone famous, and the first three people to guess who it is in the comments get a shout out in the next episode when I tell you the answer. If you gave up before guessing last time, then I hate to let you down, but the answer was Rick Astley. The first person to get it, twice running now, was the inimitable Danny Nolan. Emmy Animotions has got the solutions, taking second place. And in third, our hundredth subscriber, Kin Hyphen, of Sin Minus, of Sinus? Thanks for getting us this far, ladies and gentlemen. Only 148 million to go. This week's subject's most identifiable feature is probably their upper lip. 
I'm not saying it's abnormally long, just that if you were to lay this individual down along the equator, their mouth and nose would find themselves in entirely different time zones. In fact, people tend to be so blinded by the majesty of this upper lip that they fail to notice the chin right under it is trying just as hard to make it into the Guinness Book of World Records. Any art teacher will tell you that negative space is very important. Whoever designed this person's short, upturned nose to be practically all nostril clearly took that to heart. Add to this a broad mouth, squinty eyes, and a tall forehead, and you've got a face that could have been busted out of Area 51. Now who could this be? If you know who that was, or there's a Paper Mario character you'd like to see reworked, let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, consider sharing it on your favourite social media. Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, Tinder, but thanks again everyone for getting us to 100 subscribers. This has been The Harry Gold Show, so until next time, stay safe, and God bless.